Recent computer science graduates are completely unable to find work. 2025 is going to be the year of AI agents. We're not adding any more software engineers next year. We stopped hiring about a year ago, so we were 4,500. Now we're 3,500. It's that the time it's taking to reach $100 million in annual revenue is trending down. You have to stop running behind the big tech anymore. The number of companies that could actually make it to $100 million went up by 10x. Mm -hmm. So what was 15 per year maybe 20 years ago, I mean, we're talking about 1,500 companies a year that have a real shot. Now the question is not that AI will take my software engineering job or not, but the question is how and when AI will take your job and what are the things you need to be doing right now to get ready for 2025. You cannot anymore expect, oh, the market is going to be better in 2025, interest rates are going to go down, and you will be able to find a space in big tech like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and they're going to welcome you with open arms like 2021 and 2022 to hire you. No, that's not going to happen at all. They will continue to invest in GPUs. They will continue to invest in more AI resources with the same workforce they have. What Salesforce CEO said, what Klarna CEO saying, what Shopify CEO saying is basically that they will try to have exponential growth without hiring extra engineers like you. Now, how it all started? It started in 2022 when Elon Musk acquired Twitter and laid off 80% of the workforce. And currently, even still now, Twitter, I use it every day. It works pretty much the same way I used to use before. Of course, the content algorithm maybe has maybe maybe gone in different direction you may not expect but the app overall the video playback content the speed of how i use the app i don't see any difference even the search i see maybe some problems in searching on twitter which i did not see before but overall the app is fully functional the way it was before with 20 percent of the workforce and other ceos are taking him as an inspiration to have a more profitable company not just other ceos if you look at this podcast of yc time it's taking to reach 100 million dollars in annual revenue is trending down they share that it is far more easier with less workforce to have a multi-million dollar revenue generating company in just a couple of years even they gave example of opus clip there are many companies with just one round of funding is heavily heavily profitable this year yc batch so it's not just a couple of ceos talking about oh they, they don't need many engineers majority of startups coming on the same page that they can run with less workforce. So 2025 is going to be the year that you cannot expect that hiring to exponentially increase with less interest rates. No, you need to find a way to find space for yourself in the industry. Let me tell you how it's going to happen. I, I talk talked to many Georgia Tech students this year to figure out what is something in them that they are getting internships easily. Like some students undergraduate students, 17-year-old students getting internship in NVIDIA, getting internships in Meta, getting internships in startups, YC startups at the age of 18. But on the other hand, master students with years of experience not able to find room for themselves in the industry. What is something that is changing in 2024 and coming in 2025? That is the founder-led energy in college versus the industry-led energy. Things have completely changed. I see at Georgia Tech, majority of people are chasing the startups, chasing the projects and how to build the project end to end, including making the project, getting the marketing done, taking it to the customers and doing that end to end cycle completely multiple times in order to apply for YC, ship it to the customers. And with this experience, when they apply, when they have a completely industry level experience of owning the product and shipping it they are more inclined towards getting hired in companies this is a biggest change which has happened in 2024 and it's going to be even more noticeable in 2025 there is like more than half of students they don't they don't get freaked out oh i'm not gonna get hired they are trying to make room for themselves by trying themselves to create a startup and with that experience apply for other startups and everyone wants that experience everyone 
is okay to have a leader with engineering experience in their team and they welcome you with open arms. Number two, you need to accept right now that what AI can do. I'm going to give you an example of some of the agentic flows, such as this audio you're going to hear right now is not me speaking right now. It's created with 11 labs. This is my voice created using AI models. Shocking, right? And even the video I can now create with Hagen. Now, what is stopping me to have an agent which search the internet, find some viral or trending content, creates the content with my audio, with my face and pushes to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. What is stopping me from doing that? And that's going to happen very soon. And you will see a lot of agentic automatically uploading videos happening soon. And same is what's going to happen soon in software engineering as well. A lot of end-to-end -end apps which are completely made by AI, AI publishes to the app store, maybe a few clicks needed for you to confirm, but almost end-to-end -end apps being published, which are made by AI, maintained by AI. And that is possible. If you look at the review of Devin as well, which is a software engineering AI agent, which is trying to be a cursor AI killer. Cursor is like, you know, GitHub Copilot, which you use in VS Code. And by the way, GitHub Copilot also got made free from right now. So you can use AI much more closely than you ever could. And Cursor AI is an AI first editor. So basically these agentic AI editors, Cursor has its own agent. Let's say you give a project with some of the errors, some of the dependencies missing, you can type a prompt and it fixes for you. And this guy, this builder.io guy went and did a review and compared what do we have right now. So the conclusion I'm going to share from multiple videos I've watched of Devon AI, I didn't want to spend $500, is that AI still hallucinates. So even in the review this guy made of Devon, you can see that if AI, rather than just making one line of change, which you expect makes 50 lines of changes, it's really difficult to ask Devin, hey, just undo these changes. It gives you a random explanation, which doesn't make sense. It, it hallucinates and it takes a lot of time. So this guy indeed prefers a cursor AI flow in which you have more control that, oh, if, if the AI model hallucinates, give extra output, you can just go ahead with one prompt, delete that, and that's instant. But with Devin, you have to wait till 15 minutes to create a new PR. It creates a pull request on GitHub. So that cycle has a delay. But on the other hand, Devin has a better debugging tool available for you. So if you have some bugs, it can figure out that bug faster than cursor. But when you use cursor, you basically have to give signal. You have to give a better prompt. Where is the bug possibly? What is happening? So there are pros and cons of both, but the sum of Cursor and Devon is going to be the best tool that software engineers can use to ship end-to-end -end projects with just few changes. So you will become a software engineering manager of these AI agents instead of software engineer. And will that happen? How will that happen? Let me tell you how. So these agents can work perfectly fine if it is a product or project from scratch. So let me tell you, like a code is only as good as clean it is written. If you use variables like, you know, like some Gen Z variables, like this is mid, this is sus. So if you write words like this, which even you cannot understand, even your senior engineer cannot understand, then possibly the AI agent or the LLM will not be able to understand either. So these AI models are as good as clean the code is written and as good they can understand and less they hallucinate. So to prevent that, if you make a project from scratch, which is made by AI, it, it can be possibly more easy to be maintained by that AI agent. You are going to see that a lot more frequently. There are actually so many YouTube channels which are made through agentic workflows. Just search the internet, make video, publish. Similar is going to be seen in software engineering workforce as well. You just have to wait and watch and accept that's going to happen. So now let's talk about the possibility that how far we are. Currently, there are more than 50 million plus software engineers. And to have like, you know, these agentic flows for all 50 million software engineers, 
you cannot have that because currently we don't have enough data centers enough gpus enough capacity to actually just go ahead and remove 50 million software engineers and just have you know these ai agents do the job you will see all of these models going down because the it's a it's a demand and supply game you don't have enough supply available to just remove all 50 million engineers you have supply available to maybe have two good software engineers instead of like three or four so you need to know the reality right now and that's why you're going to see the trend continue to happen that you will be able to manage a big startup with a smaller team just like sam altman said there'll be soon a unicorn with 10 people in a team so that's going to happen so you just need to accept it and have more of a builder mindset just like Harkirat also mentioned in his video the mediocrity mindset has to be over you have to forget that you know, you are settled in a job. I don't think there is anything harm in it. I am also pretty much settled in a job. I'm happy. But I think those who are entering the workforce, they need to kind of let go that mediocrity mindset and think of as a builder mindset because all the college students now entering workforce are coming from a builder mindset as well. So once you have a builder mindset, even if you try to do a startup, it works or doesn't work. That doesn't matter. But with that mindset, you will definitely be a unique and a better software engineer entering the workforce. So once you have that mindset, I promise all the internships you're trying to crack, all the jobs you want to you know get into, you will be standing out. Another project idea for all of you, I was interviewing one of the one of the greatest cloud engineers, Hardik. He mentioned that how he creates unique projects is he goes to the research papers of these companies like Netflix, Google, Meta, and tries to implement that research paper into a project and mentions in his resume. So this is a very unique project in which you get the tag of all of these companies, Netflix, Google, etc. And that's how that project stands out in the crowd for the recruiter as well. Number three strategy I'm going to mention is you have to stop running behind the big tech anymore. Big tech might not be hiring as fast as you might think. I see so many of my friends who used to work at Walmart, their whole team is shifted to India, then they get laid off. I see so many of my friends in other big tech companies because these companies are still thinking if they can get cheaper, five times cheaper software engineer in India, then why wouldn't they do it? So you have to go ahead and be more consistent, better and unique projects as I gave you two ideas. You have to go and be more consistent and remember, the power is in the follow-up. Uh, all of my friends told me, not a single recruiter has replied to them with just the first email. Power is in the follow-up. Even one of my great friends told me, he got replied from Twitter's recruiter after emailing 27 times in a course of months when he continued to express passion and like enthusiasm for Twitter or like also known as X, he wanted to get hired. He did get hired, but after the 27th email, getting that interview opportunity. So this passion will not go waste. You need to have a solid Excel sheet and automate the process of following up with better passion. Every single time you follow up for that company, startups, you need to target startups more. As I told you, big tech is not going to hire at the same pace. So you need to have passion for like 25 plus unicorns were formed this year. So when you show that passion, not just passion, obsession, when you obsess over something you want to bring the change in that company like Twitter, perplexity, when you show that and show why it's important to you, why you're passionate about it, what, what change you want to bring, this will not go waste. And follow up, make a, make a solid follow up plan that you want to follow up every one week every 48 hours. I think 48 hours is too extreme. So every week you can follow up over the course of few months and I'm sure it will not go waste and try to follow up with multiple recruiters. These recruiters are used to seeing many emails, but don't harass them by following up every day. Just be patient and follow up has the real power in sales as well and as well as in getting hired. Number four, I know many creators will recommend just run behind AI, learn how to create AI agents. I will still say that don't always run behind the hype. Make room in some specialized areas for yourself. I can tell you all the senior engineers around me I have been with, they started their life with iOS, Android, React, whatever they did. They still do it 
and they still do it at the best possible level you can think of. They they're called specialized React developers, specialized Java developer, and they're still in demand. No one, you know, no one is like, you know, specialized Java developer is taken by. No one thinks that right now. So I think you really need to learn that expertise and how you become like that specialized developer. You don't become by going deep into the subject. You become by trying and making multiple projects using that technology. For example, uh, I talked to young, one of the youngest Microsoft developer. He said that he tried to make mobile apps for four years, multiple apps till he got like 100,000 downloads. So by building apps for a couple of years in different, different ideas, different, different technologies, different, different implementations, he finally called himself an experienced mobile app developer because he saw all sides of development, making like a video app as well, chatbot app as well. And he knows one, when and what kind of app when it crashes and he got that specialized role. So you don't need to think that you need to go deep by learning the topic. You need to go deep by trying different apps, trying different projects to learn that language, learn that technology properly. And last advice I will give you is, you know, Every day, write a journal, think about how much time you spend consuming content versus how much time you spend in making an action for yourself. So for example, let's say today, I spent two hours watching and listening podcasts, reels, etc. But indeed, spend two hours editing, three hours filming. So net, I am in a positive in taking actions. So every day, or maybe I spend like three hours coding as well. So every day, if you are net positive, in doing actions as compared to consumption, you will feel proud of yourself because majority of the people around you, like India, I saw that the brain rot problem, people spend seven hours in consuming content every day average, which is insane. That means the action they, they're taking probably in a day is way less than the amount of content they're consuming. Every day, go home and write on a piece of paper in your diary, in your journal, that these many hours of content I consume and this much action, these many hours of action I took for myself. These will be my five advice for you for 2025. So stop consumption, keep a track of it and start working on action right now. Thank you so much for watching.